need to do that. Good evening and welcome to Wednesday Night Hour of Power here at Faith and Victory Church. We're glad to have you. Hope that you're uh, having a great day. And um, our announcement is that Sunday, Olivia Moore will be with us. Uh, Sunday morning will be her ministry. And um, not me. And uh, so we're looking forward to having her with us. She... Um, she went to Raymond with the girls, and um, she's been out ministering on her own now for, I don't know, I guess a year or so. She's been traveling and going and doing her own, her, her own ministry. So praise the Lord. Amen. And um, glory to God in her little Volkswagen Vanagon. Hippie mobile, I call it. That's what it looks like. It looks like an old hippie mobile, you know. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So be with us Sunday. Be out here for Sunday, all right? Praise God. Um, I just turned it to mute, and it comes on wide open. Thank you, Jesus, for victory over technology. Y'all see where Sweden, people in Sweden, thousands of people have been putting chips in their hand. Yes? Yeah, they've been planting chips into their hand, and... Um, you think, my goodness, can can we get you know? And but so people so not dull, they don't they don't see the end times from the Bible, you know, just playing it right there. I mean, you know, McDonald's been talking about for years having scanners that would be able to read uh, chips in your hands and stuff. And now people in Sweden are doing it because it's easier banking, it's better, easier than carrying a credit card where you just put swipe your hand and tick, and it picks up the electronic uh, whatever. You know, we we have implants in dogs and cats and stuff so they get lost. Uh, they get found, they can take them, they can take them to a vet, they can read it and tell exactly who they are, where they're from, have their records and everything in there. And, um, you know, and, and we, don't, we don't think twice about doing it with our animals because, hey, that's wait, wait, if, if Fido gets lost, we can, and somebody picks them up, we, they can get them back to us. Uh, but, yeah, the next one is humans. Yes, that's exactly right. Praise God. Um, so we've been teaching on prayer. And uh, we're in Ephesians 6, 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching there and with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Um, we started out um, on this, teaching on the prayer of faith. And we, like we said, that's the, also call this the prayer of believing and receiving. Okay? That prayer of um, consecration and dedication. And what did we say this was? This was a kind of a prayer? Have a free prayer, okay. And um, talked about we talked about the past few, um, um, two or three weeks. We talked about the prayer of worship, praise, or adoration, okay. And. Um, and we have the prayer of thanksgiving. Prayer of supplication. Intercession. And number seven. What have I left out here? Huh? Thank you. Prayer binding and loosening. Thank you, Joe. We've talked about um see we talked about this, we talked about this, this, this. Okay. So now we're into these these prayers here. Um can I just you know and, and, and we don't have to get into real depth here. Um when we start talking about praying, you know, the Bible tells you that without that we're to ask God with with Thanksgiving, and whatever we ask God, we ask with Thanksgiving. You know, uh, Thanksgiving. You know, we we um. This is the grateful heart prayer. Okay, it's a grateful heart. Heart, not dead. Just in case. Or old hippies are around. <laughs> okay. Um, 
give thanks to the Lord. Amen. You know, go if you go into the Psalms, we just kind of flip. We can just kind of flip through the Psalms, and um, you'll see over and over and over. They give thanks to the Lord. Um, oh, give thanks to the Lord for He is good, for His mercy endures forever. Um, over and over and over again, we're told to give thanks. One of the things that we have to watch out for uh, in um, well, you know, in our circles, you know, the prayer believing and receive, we, we, we were very much, you know, given into what we call the word of faith, the prayer believing and receiving. We're getting things from God. Um, we got authority to get things and to have things and to believe, you know, we're confessing. But it seemed to me, uh, from my experience uh, over the years of watching people, that one of the areas that we did get off track in or could get off track and people could get off track in um, <clears throat> was the arena of being having a grateful heart. When when we were teaching, because we were overcoming the, the pendulum being out of balance, you know, um, you know, pendulums, you know, well, you, you, if you have a road, dot, 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 you know, you got your... Some reason we don't believe in the middle of the road. We like ditches. Okay? We just love to be from one ditch to the other. We just, you know, can't go... Two, we're owed. And we wouldn't say that. You would never hear us say we're owed that. Okay. Uh, that we've been told in the church, you know, that God has a reason for you being poor and God has a reason for you not having things and these kind of things. We, we, we kind of um, saw, <coughs> excuse me, the fallacy of this, you know, uh, the God's making you poor. God's, you know, God doesn't want you to have anything. You know, just uh, you got to just kind of live like you are. And that's how it is. God makes some people poor. You know, like one guy said, he preacher said, God will make some people poor so he can work out, work out compassion and rich people. I mean, that's one of probably the most asinine things I've ever heard. You know, no, no, I didn't either. Um, you know, and uh, you got got preachers you know selling books making millions of dollars and uh, that's just God's calling for them to have and so they go get the nice houses and all this kind of stuff but then in the writings they'll tell people they're not supposed to have all that well no uh, you know listen that 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 don't float okay that that shoe just don't fit all right so we get we got these kind of mindsets we had in the church where we couldn't have anything and then we kind of we got the revelation and the joy of the revelation the excitement of the revelation that you know the word of God promises And wealth and, and be blessed. You know, and, and of course, we got claimed that. Blab, blab it and grab it, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And the reason that happened is, is because we got from here and ran over and got the other ditch. Okay? And in that process of have, coming into the revelation and so. developed a an attitude that wasn't godly uh, you know the spirit of the world that entitlement mindset and we lost the grateful heart not every, now listen not every single person and not the entire bunch but we saw it prevalent okay it was it was it was prevalent it was um it became uh, it was just in there everywhere. And we see that now in our churches. Uh, we go to church, and why, why do we go to church? It, it's all about me. We, we cater to the... Uh, ...experience. They're coming for the entertainment. They're coming for the, you know, what, what, what are you going to do for me when I come? This is not there. And so the prayer of thanksgiving is, is one of those things that keeps us where we, we're thankful to God. When we go to God, we, we're, we're, we're asking, yes, we're believing, we receive, and we're, we're speaking the word, we're doing the word. But let all your requests, the prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving be made known unto God. Okay? With thanksgiving. Now, 
This is heart. This isn't your the heart in communing with God through His Word about what He's done for you and what He's offered you. The kids come and you give them through families and, you know, and, and obviously that the Five minutes with Dr. Phil on there. With Dr. Phil with this girl. That her mother won't give her a thousand dollar five hundred. a cheap car, she wants her Mercedes. Get a job. So she's she's over here in this, you know, I'm owed this. Now, that doesn't mean $1,000 a month to live off of. That means an allowance. I'm paying your bills. I'm providing the clothes. I'm providing the food. This is for you. She didn't want to work. So she's not grateful. She's not, you know, she's, she's upset. She's upset that she can't have that. And that well, mom's going to provide a car for her, but it's not going to be a Mercedes. It's going to be a, a Toyota or a Honda or something that's not brand new. She didn't want to drive that. See, when we lose sight that, yes, God's got, you know, got all the promises in the Word of God, that we can go to the Word and we can believe that we receive what His Word promises us, okay? We have to understand that the Bible tempers itself through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God, okay? We have to have a, a, an appreciative heart what God has done for us and what God does for us. It can't simply be what's in it for me. And so we, what's happened is our mindset in, the, in, in, our, in our circle, and I say our circles, because in the charismatic word of faith, you, you don't get this over in the, you know, in the Pentecostals and the Baptists and that kind of thing. They don't believe you can believe, believe you receive in the first place, okay, like that. They don't believe that you can go to God and get prosperity and that kind of thing. So they're over here already, you know, groveling about, you know, what was me, you know, and, um, you know, I'll take whatever you give me. Satan can't keep you out of something. He'll push you too far. God's promise that God wants us to have, but then he's going to push you over. overboard on that side and get over here where well God owes me and God you know and we lose we begin to lose sight um like I said I heard that I heard this minister one time say uh, you know thank God for their ministry but he said something I thought Because it works. And that's the problem. We've got people in the church who've kind of gone to this works and they've, without saying it, they've left God out, Jesus out, the Bible out, and their attitude. And that's why we, you know, one of the prayer of Thanksgiving is one of the, <coughs> one of our foundation or main prayers here is because whatever we do, we need to be thankful. We need to have thanks. We need to have a thankful heart. Okay? What he provides for us. Even the promises of God are a grace of God. He didn't have to promise it. 
He didn't have to do it. But he wanted to bless his family. He wanted us to walk in, in, in the blessings he has, has provision for. We can't be like the arrogant, snot-nosed, rich brat kid who demands that we get all this stuff just because that's what I want and lose sight of where it came from. See too many generations that, you know, the family worked and worked and worked hard and had work ethic. Expect this without ever working for it. And there's not a gratefulness. And we've seen that with the, like I said, with the, with the, uh, the elite in America, the Wonder who that was. Anyway, um, you know, and set up estates, and now they want to tax the world. Of uh, utopia, and they're not going to be touched by it because all their money's. Off the interest and stuff. And um, yeah, that's how it works, you know. And. Um, but, there, but you see kids and you just see the, the, uh, the lifestyle and the, you know, the entitlement. And we shouldn't have that in the church. That should not be us. We should be ever grateful to God. We should be ever thankful to God. We should, we should daily remind him how much we appreciate all he's done for us. Okay? Starting with the new birth. Starting with Jesus. And everything we're doing, when we're doing things, we need to be thankful that he wants to bless our life. Not grumbling about what we don't have, but thankful for what he's done and what he will do. He will do more. Um, we encounter difficult places. We can still be thankful for what we've, what we've already been through, what he's already done for us, and thankful for what's coming ahead. Amen? Hallelujah. Where is it? In everything, give thanks. Hallelujah. Guess you're looking it up. All right. Thank you. Thessalonians 5.18. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Notice it didn't say for everything. It said in everything. See, we can be grateful and thankful to God in the midst of a battle. We can be in, grateful to God and thankful to God in the midst of warfare. We can be miserable. won't happen happening around us. Because we have to keep our focus that, and be thankful to God. Because God's your answer. God's your, your, your deliverance. God is, what you, what, is who you have need of. song with Raymond and we um, we had picked it up when we had people who, who, who sang those kind of songs for us but um, he'll do it again God is not limited to a what God has done you begin to shut the door blessings down okay you will begin to shut it down one thing that God doesn't doesn't honor is arrogance you look back into um, Proverbs, it says, These things that the Lord. Thanks. Pride comes with. Thanks. 
honestly, is one of the things that we, we got to coming out of here is a lot of people got halty. Well, like we said before, you know, pre-prayer would be consecration, dedication, you know, staying consecrated, dedicated. But then we get down to this Thanksgiving thing. Now, worship, see, we got people, you know, worship, you know, we talked about that past few weeks, you know, worshiping God, thanking, you know, just, just, just being in his presence, being, you know, close to him. But maintaining a grateful heart. Keeps you from becoming disgruntled. Um, he should be. He said, now he didn't have. He didn't understand everything. Well, one reason is he didn't have any Bible to understand. He, it's the oldest book in the Bible, chronologically. His, his is the oldest written book. So if you get a chronological Bible, it's the first book in it. Is, is older than any other thing, anything else we have. And um, his wife said, "Come to him. Well, will you will you serve God?" And then all this Job didn't see him with his lips because he didn't know any better. He he did get what he believed for, which was calamity. That was the things that he was saying. You know, giving up on God. You know, uh, he he's he is who I honor and, and so forth. And even if he slayed me, I will serve him. See, and we we can't um, we can't allow our heart. Because 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 then we become entitled, we become hard, and we listen. You lose your testimony. In my hand, unless you come to a place that says, and where did it come from? God has dealt to you the measure of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You see? So don't ever get to the point that my hand hath gotten me this. Because in the end, you didn't. Get, you couldn't get the faith to get it within the first place. God had to give you the faith to believe within the first place. <clears throat> so we we work really hard at um you know getting faith to receive things and to get be able to bind the devil and to you know have rock and worship in our churches and that's no, that was another story from last week. <laughs> I, I I love I love it when we're, we're people are just excited about God and serving God. But when it becomes a show, I, I just it, it, it just it turns me off. I said it, it just it just turns my stomach. That we're that we're more interested in the in the performance than that we are of in, in having a heart toward God. It just it just it just something about it just turns my stomach. And um because we're we're not pulling pointing people to Jesus. Remember Jesus said, if I be lifted up from the earth. I will draw all men unto me. If I be lifted up from the earth. Well, see, when we get about how great the worship leader is and even how great the pastor is. You know? Like Brother Hagin said, they say, they, they, people went out. He said they lied on him. Tell us, God, I will not share my glory with any man. In keeping our heart on track, keeping our heart pure, keeping our heart where it, it's grateful. I know. You know, your word said that by your stripes I was healed. And I, I, I took your word and I believed your word and I acted on your word and I'm healed. But thank you that Jesus came and Jesus bore my sickness and Jesus carried. Thank you that you saw 
and, and, and had the foresight to see the need for our bodies to be made well. And you made provision even before I was born for me to ha I'm so grateful and thankful to you. It's not me. It's not my great faith. That faith came from you. And I'm thankful, thankful, God, that you, you blessed me. Thank you, God, that you made provision. Thank you, God, that you gave a word that does work. Amen? Thank you, Lord. I have my toe today. You know? Um, that's personal. I got my toe. Thank you, Lord, I got my toe. Didn't that they didn't believe I was going to keep my toe. You know? They can't explain why I kept my toe. I can't. My father made provision for a faith and a power that I could lay hold of and receive in my body that provision that he made it available. Yeah, I had to do my part. But my part was to act on what he provided. Had he not provided it, I couldn't have done my part. There wasn't a part been, been a part for me to do. But he gave a word. He gave faith. He gave a word to have you know to put your faith in. He gave. He made a provision for us, and we have to understand that. <clears throat> the prosperity that we, we believe for and, the, and all these things and the you know the in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Available. Okay? And so when we, we enter into prayer. With thanksgiving, we make our request known to God. Remember James said this. He said something very interesting. James chapter 4, and verse 6. He says, you have not because you ask not. Or, come consuming me upon my own lust. There you go. There's, how do we get there? that and we you know it's like the people I can go see and I can fornicate I can drink I'm under grace so it doesn't matter there's no repent I don't have to repent it doesn't matter I'm under grace see they don't have this you can't be thankful to God that he delivered you from sin and then go out and embrace it You just can't do it. You cannot be thankful to God for his grace that's delivered you from sin and the power of sin and then go out and embrace the very thing that his grace delivered you from. You're, you're thankful and grateful you're not going to hell, and that's the only thing. You're, you know, but you can live like you want to live and not live without the condemnation and still get all the, you know, you're getting all the benefits. You're an entitled. much money they've given to illegal aliens who didn't pay taxes. They're filing tax returns and getting money for taxes they How are you how are either why don't I just write send in a tax return to Sweden and tell them that I want, you know, um, money from Sweden and I didn't pay taxes there. There's not another country that's going to do it. Except here, because they want to destroy the country. Okay? But we got people who want, who want all the blessings of God without any come back to give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Amen? When we, uh, when we read the Psalms and He's over, you know, give thanks to the Lord for His good and His mercy endureth forever. How many times have you seen that throughout the, the book? Of
to Lord, the, the Lord of Lords. You know, over and over and over again, we have these scriptures about. Psalms were their hymn book. It's their hymnal. Okay? And it was full of these psalms that were reminders to keep their hearts on track. And one of the things Israel had a problem with was being thankful. <coughs> God do something for one man. about with a strong hand so you see the ten plagues god brings them out supernaturally would the would god bring us out in the wilderness to, to, to kill us out here we don't have ain't no thank the uh, getting the word from god you know for the people and they they're making idols we're not talking you know 40 years 40 days he's up there and they're already turned and lost their grateful heart and you know and, and it, well and we, he, he brought us out here but now he's going to kill us out here in the desert he didn't go he could have killed you there he could have just sent a plague and wiped you out in Egypt instead of having to move you out here in the middle of the desert to do it wonder why the message of faith or the word of faith doesn't seem to be working for them. We've lost a thankful heart. We're not giving thanks and giving. We got so used to being able to confess the word and declare the word and believe the word, you know, say it, believe it. Receive it, tell Jesus, you know, how to write your own ticket with God. Still a biblical principle. Brother Hagin's book. Context. Amen. That is within the context of having a relationship with God where you're, you're thankful to Him. You, you worship Him. You're 